How's everyone doing today? Studio BK here, and today we're going to go through another example of the Microsoft Office Specialist uh, 2013-2016 practice exam. So, I haven't done this in a while, but the last video I uploaded was on, was in June, maybe, May of 2015, and I will provide the file from this, uh, from this video into the description because thankfully um, another YouTuber did this exact review and I'm going to do it myself and I'm going to see if I can do it as well just to try and clarify a couple of instructions okay so here we go alright so open the file and then do this you're already gonna have the file open your screens gonna you're gonna have the document up here you're gonna have your instructions down here this isn't gonna look exactly like it but it's gonna be pretty close unless they've changed the format okay here we go Number one, save it to your desktop and use the name declaration dash first name dash last name dot docx. Pretty simple. Go to file, go to save as, go to arrow, click on desktop, and then type in declaration first name last name and hit an arrow. Pretty simple. All right. Number two, set the margins for the entire document to one inch on all four sides. Pretty simple. Go to layout, then where it says margins, and click on normal at the top. But if you need custom margins, go to go to margins, custom margins, and type in whatever you need. Okay. Number three. Set the font name for the entire document to Times New Roman. Pretty simple. Press Control A. Go to home. Go to font. Click on Times New Roman. Number four, set the line spacing for the entire document to 1.15. Very simple. Press Control A, go to Layout, go to this little tab where it says line spacing. Type in 1.15, I believe, right? Set the line spacing, I think. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's it. All right, number six. Set the line alignment for, to left align for the entire document. Press Control A, go to Home, click on the left, or align left, or press Control L, and they'll all align over here. Okay? Number seven, set the font size for the entire document to 12 point. Let's zoom in a little bit on the document. Okay? Press Control A, go to the font tab up here, click on 12. All right? Number 13, or whatever number we're on. I don't know why I said 13. That is not 13. <laughs> I'm looking at 12. And that makes sense of <clears throat> 13. All right, next one. Move the five pink paragraphs to the beginning of the document. All right, we'll scroll down to the bottom here. We will select our paragraphs. Press, uh, press Control X or right click cut. Go to the top. Press Enter once. Have your cursor here. And click on keep text only. Sure, wait, no. Uh, click on keep source formatting. There we go. Number whatever. Divide the document into two sections. Section two should begin immediately left of the word begin, where it says begin section two here. The type of section break should be next page. Let's see. Let's find that real quick. Right here. Go to view. Um, let's see. Sections. Hmm. Insert page break or set like I have not done this in a very long time. I do apologize. And I am pretty stuck right now. Let's see, I'm not sure about this one. A let's see. A section. Is this like um like a page break? Oh, here we go. Section break. Okay, so go to break, then go to next page. There you go. <clears throat> All right, here we go. The following instructions only apply to section one. So section one is this part right here. All right, add a cover title. Use the facet style. <laughs> go to insert. Go to cover page, 
then click on Facet. All right. Delete the subtitle, email address, and abstract. I believe that is that. The name. Oh, come on. Go. And I believe that's it. <clears throat> All right. Next one. Change the author to your name. Oh, okay. So we just do change this to my name. Okay. Put today's date below your name. So in this section, I believe. Uh, March 9th, 2017. All right. Set the first line indent of all the paragraphs in section 1 to 0 0.025 or 0.25 inches. All right. So highlight all of the paragraphs in the section. Go to design go to layout. Go to <coughs> I do apologize. Go to paragraph. Go to let's see where is it? Uh, so that's the first line indent of all the paragraphs in section one to that. So first line, then change, click on special, click on first line, then separate it by 2.5 inches. There we go. Set the spacing before each paragraph in section one to six points. Okay, so we select all the text in the section. Go to uh, the paragraph tab again, where it says spacing before. Change it from one to six points. Well, um, from zero to six points, I'm, I'm sorry. Make the three paragraphs, three, four, and five, from he has refused his ascent through he has refused to pass into a bulleted list. Okay, so we need to find that. He has refused, let's see. We'll just do control F. Here we go, and then we will insert this, we will change this to, go to home, click on bolted list, there we go. Next one, set the line spacing for paragraph one, when in the course, to double space. Just highlight the text, right click, and don't uh, click on paragraph, click on line spacing, click on double, all right. Add a drop cap to paragraph one. Choose the dropped style. I'll admit I do not know how to do this one. We'll just figure it out then. Um, paragraph maybe. Let's see. I'll admit I don't know about this one. Oh, okay. A a drop cap. Okay. Um, let's see here. What would a drop cap be? There we go. Okay. Go under insert, drop cap, and click on dropped. Ah, <laughs> that's cool. Uh, next one. Increase the margins for paragraph 2 by 0 0.05 on both the left and the right. Alright, so highlight the second paragraph. Right click, go to paragraph. On the left, we will change that to 0.5. Point five. There we go. Set the alignment for paragraph two to justify. Go to home. Under paragraphs at the paragraph section. Click on justify or press control J. Add your name for the right part of the section one header and ten point for Verdana. Note this header will carry over to section two. So go to insert. Go to header. Go to Blank to the right part of section one. So click on right indent, click on the font, type in Verdana, and show you it to 10 point, and type in uh, your name. Do not add in that space. <laughs> add page numbers to the center part of the page of the section one footer in 10 point Verdana. This will also carry over to section two. Click on design, 
go to footer click or press control E or go to the home tab and click on the center button and then click on design again under page number select page number at the current position there you go and then change the font from times to roman to Verdana and decrease the font to 10 to 10 points and there you go next change all nine occurrences of the word gov to government press con or just press the replace button or control h type in gov to government Oop, whoops replace all what what let's turn our sound effects down uh match case Really? Let's try and select the text. Okay, I guess there's none. <laughs> Alright, so next one. <clears throat> Add a citation to the end of the last paragraph, or at the last line of the first paragraph after the word separation. Of the first paragraph. There it is. Click on... Let's see references. Click on citation, insert citation. Click on add new source. Click on, it should be miscellaneous. The author will be Jefferson Thomas. The title is Declaration of Independence. The year is 1776. And the city is Philadelphia. All right. There we go. Insert a bibliography at the end of section one. Choose the work cited type. Scroll down to the bottom. Click on table of, oh no, uh, click on bibliography. My bad. Where's, there it is. Click on work cited. And there you go. All right, section two. Add a heading one style to the begin section two here text. Go to home, go to heading one. And there you go. Set the page orientation for section two to landscape. Select all the text. Click on layout, click on orientation, landscape. Next section. Set the columns for section two to two. Pretty simple. Highlight everything, click on columns, click on two. All right. In the blue text, set a right tab stop at the four inch mark. <laughs> One. Oh. Set a right tab stop at the four inch mark. Let's see. Go to paragraph, I believe. Let's see. A right tab stop. Go to tabs. Click on right at the four inch mark. So change this to four. There we go. That does not look right. A right tab stop at the four inch mark. Let's, let's show that again. Go to tabs. Uh, let's see, right at the four inch. There we go. That seems way better. We'll select all of it this time. And not just some of it. There we go. That's much better. Add a dot leader to that tab stop. Pretty simple. Right click. Paragraph. Tabs. Then click on number two. A dot leader. There you go. Convert the green text into a column or two. Nah. <laughs> into a two column table using the pre-existing character tabs to separate column one from column two. Here we go. Right click on this, go to insert, go to the table, there it is. Click on convert text to table. Then where it says use existing tab characters. Yep. And there we go. Set all the borders of the table 
to three point red lines. Go to uh, three point, click on pen color, and click on red. What? <laughs> hmm. Whoa, what is that? Hmm. Nope, oh, that is that. Whoops. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> that should be it. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. I didn't know you could do that, actually. I believe this is not the way you're supposed to do it, but it'll work. Hmm, let's see. That all the borders, so... Oh, what? Oh, okay. Let's select the whole table. Click on borders. Click on all borders. There we go. That's much more efficient. All right. Set the column width for column 1 to 1.7 and column 2 to 2.2. So highlight this, click on first column, click on layout, change the width to uh, 0.7, and then column 2 to 2.2. 2. There we go. And so our column break immediately above the table, forcing the table to become, forcing the table to the top of column 2. Let's see, a column break, where is that at? A, go to B. We had it earlier. Insert a, <coughs> a break. Click on column break. There we go. Add word art with the text Declaration of Independence to the top of section 2. Choose any style, font, size, and color that you wish. You may have to push existing text down to make room. Go to insert. Go to word art. We will choose this one. We'll drag it over here. Does it say at the top of it? Yeah. We'll choose we we'll change text to Declaration of Independence. There we go. Fairly straightforward. There we go. <laughs> Add the pictured style beveled oval black picture of Thomas Jefferson. Right click, go to format picture. Let's see. I don't believe that is what it is. Oh, picture styles. Go to format. Go to uh, beveled oval black. There we go. Position, position the picture so that it's centered below the table. And all you have to do is right click on it, click on wrap text, click on in front of text, and just drag it over here. There we go. And that is our document. Take a minute to compare yours with mine, just to make sure everything is correct. Just pause the video if you need to take a look at anything. If, if you have any questions, um, leave them in the comments below. Again, I do apologize for me sounding very hoarse, but I am sick like I stated. And if you have any, um, any corrections or anything that I may have done, please do leave those in the comments as well. Alright, so I'll see you all next time.